Is it, Jen, did you see it in both the March 2 and March 23? So there are two folders in your facilitator folder. One says March 2 training and one says March 23 training. And it's called Appreciative Inquiry. Is that what it's called on the link too? Appreciative Inquiry, Foundations and Practice, the hundred and some pages. Everybody finding it? No, I'm just asking all right, so we'll figure out why you didn't get an email. What's the title page? And you can see Maureen Slammer too. What? Oh. <laughs> oh no, wait. Oh, okay. Was that really? Where is he sitting? All right, are we good? Sorry. <laughs> okay, it says foundations and practice for you. Who still needs the link to the big handout? Some of us are still logging in. Okay. Focused, then it is deficit focused, right? 
And so we're, you guys practiced baking, uh, writing some questions, and we're going to do a little bit of more work with those questions that you wrote in just a few minutes. But here are the, what are called the four D's of appreciative inquiry, and this is what we're going to dive into a little deeper um, in that big packet that you have. And so the first one is discovery. The next one is dream. The third one is design. And the fourth is destiny. Don't those sound like good things? Yeah. So, so what we're going to do is we are going to jigsaw the big packet so that you're not all reading 126 pages right now. And we didn't want to give you that for homework either. So come on, big round of applause there. <laughs> So, uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to go around and, well, maybe I won't actually have you count off. I'll just do it by tables, okay? Does that feel a little better? Yes. Yeah. All right. Because it would take us 20 minutes to count off and then yeah. move you around. And then forget All right. So this table and this table are going to do one. Okay. Okay? What is one? Just, the, just a second. Just let me get your numbers first. You know, I have had Janice in instructional rounds, and I'm just saying, you know, the, the term cat herder, that is what I am when I'm with Janice. All right. So, am I right? Okay. Absolutely. And who am I today? Because she called me like four names the other day. I was first. I was. <laughs> That's the one I wasn't going to answer to. All right, so this, these two are one. You guys are two. You guys are three. You three are one. Okay? All right. So this is the part you have to pay attention to by number. Everybody knows their number, right? Okay, so the number ones are going to read, so everybody's going to read 39 to 42. So everybody write this down. 39 to 42. Then the ones are, in addition, going to read 43 to 47. The twos are going to read 48 to 52. The threes are going to read 53 to 58. And the fours are going to read 59 to 62. Okay? Everybody got their assignment. Okay, so as you are reading, what you're going to be looking for, and you can just scribble this on anything. There are, um, there are sheets, um, big yellow sheets of paper, but there's only currently enough of those for every two people. But what you're going to do is write key learnings and then links to the Hill Project. So if you want to make a T-chart, on whatever you're writing on so that you could pull out those things. That's eventually what we're going to want to be able to share with you. Okay? So the very first thing you're going to do is read this, this top section. Everyone's going to read page 39 to 42. Then you're each going to read your own subsection. And while you're doing that, you're looking for key learnings. If you were going to teach this section to somebody else, what would you want them to know? And as you're reading it, what does it remind you about with the Hill Project? Okay. What do you want to remember for your work here? So what questions do you have about your task? I'm going to check in with you in 15 minutes and see whether you're done with your reading in 15, and we'll see whether we need more time. Okay, we'll put the timer up. All right.
Because they may have a Building the ability within a school to. We're about halfway through our shine, folks. Halfway. So I think there is a lot of negative thinking about the old school in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the whole idea about data driven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that, uh, that makes me expand it into best practices. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and that makes me think of um, institutionalizing it. Yeah. So when you go away, yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. We had talked. Oh, go ahead. We had talked about that this takes a long time, and so it's nice that there's a three-year commitment because to work through this process. Yeah. Is something that's going to take three years to get through that cycle and then sustain it. May take more. I mean, I my cream is usually at like five. Yeah, we all do. But it's not one year. It's not one day. Oh, I think that's a good word. Yeah. 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 They have proud. Yeah. Just come in. You know, you got what everybody's doing. Yeah, make it all prettier. But it, what I liked about that jazz analogy is that it also had some structure that people were innovating from, right away from. You know, and some of that wasn't. Real other than the other part of the tech, you know. Yeah. Oh, can I piggyback on this? Yeah. Because I don't there know. There is a structure to draft. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like how it talks about plans written with a spirit of flexibility. Yeah. That whole idea that, you know, you have, you have all of this structure, but also through it, we have to take into account that situations change. Things change, yes. technology change, more people come in, more things come in. I think that we can help in that way. The fact that we are there, we can help them not have blinders. We can help them see that. So, <coughs> that represented us, Johnny. Like, I know what that means. Do we all know what that means? Yeah. 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 Cool. Well done. Things happen. So this is your two minute warning. I didn't hear you about I just said developing trust. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> Make sure you have a spokesperson. Who's got the closest birthday? February.
Okay. 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 You ready? Does this reflect? Anything that adds? Well, you know, I always keep when I when this reflects back to something I knew a long time ago, I think, well, why wouldn't it? We keep building on the best things we've always done. So we should be able to look back and say, oh, it all started here, or we did this right, or this was institutionalized. Or, yeah. <coughs> Good job. Yay, team. clarification on because you didn't get a chance to read this as deeply as this group or secondly if you have something that you think you could add okay so questions or something that you might add as the person is sharing what their group came up with so you're first Maureen you won the prize all right no I didn't I wasn't fast enough on that oh. so um key learning to learn your history and identify those exceptional moments that school had or they have experienced. Looking at inquiry and reflection, getting them to begin to reflect, uh, spinning the negatives as the positives. So sometimes they get brought down to the negatives, but to spin it up into the positive. This requires like a systems change and having the, helping them to be open to it. Uh, mining for the data for the can not just for what we can't do, but then also looking at their attempts so we can, so that they move toward the, what are we attempting to do that will get to our vision? And then debriefing and finding the What is it that we found throughout the system? And then connections to the Hill Project, we're looking at the pause, the paraphrase, the pose, and the probing questions. So allowing us to use those cognitive coaching skills to be able to draw out. Um, <coughs> this links to the instructional rounds process because we're looking at the celebrations, we're looking at recommendations, but also what's the magic wand? If this is going to happen, what's that magic wand going to be? It goes into, assuming the positive attempt which rounds done, creating the renewal plan, getting it focused, and helping them become Self-winding. <laughs> self you talk about reading recovery, we want self-winding kids who will 
keep learning and being strategic readers and self-blinding is continuing focusing on that vision. So what do I have, where are we? What do we have to adjust and adapt so we keep self-blinding to get to that positive vision for the school? So it's that constant renewal, reflection, what are our next steps, how are we gonna measure, how are we gonna know, it's teaching and learning cycle. Okay, so I apologize, I should have been standing near Maureen so you all could hear, but you had an amazing teacher voice, so I think everybody could hear you. So are there any questions for clarification for this group, or things that anybody would, would think would be added to their chart? Okay, all right, so All right. let's go up here. Here, I'll stand by you. <coughs> okay. okay, so we had a dream, and um, it became very apparent right off the bat that really that dream, the basis for that dream has to honor the history, and then we, um, that has to honor the positive, the, the successful piece of their history, the best history, and that's where sometimes um, it requires intentionality to have to dig deeper. You really have to hold on to. It comes out through the instructional rounds. We have found out that we will find some of that best history um, when we celebrate that piece in the instructional rounds. But in order for them to begin to think about what they can be, they have to honor where they are and really um, celebrate that. But then the, the dreaming part is what can they be? It's what's their most desired future? What is, what is it that we want those students to be able to do what they look like, what they feel like? Um, elevate the best. And that, um, we had that conversation. I bet you told us we were supposed to do this first and this second, because ours went better. Um, we found out that in some of our unique situations that we're in, that we have to focus on the dream for the students. It's that organizational dream, not necessarily, and then, and then that will dictate or transform into what the actions of the staff is, and hopefully will become the dream <laughs> of the staff too. But um, staffs are transient. They're, we're, not, we're not finding teachers in buildings for that long of a time anymore. And the same with principals. So we really have to focus on what the dream is for the students. Um, we also talked about how the narrative, um, the story, the um, has to be has to be told, has to be heard, has to be celebrated. Um, and, it, and we talked about how that is that's where we get excited. That's where we that's where the juices start going when we hear that narrative. Um, and then that brings us to that the positive, provocative propositions. Um, the possibilities, what the future could be, what we can be working on. How did I do? Okay. Are there uh, questions that you want clarified? Anything you want clarified? Anything to add? All right. Where's my group number three? Right here. <coughs> Okay, so when thinking about design with regard to appreciative inquiry, there's really three big ideas. Um, so key learnings around architecture, work processes, and relational dynamics. So some of the questions and connections to our work, um, thinking about that architecture piece, how do we redefine and rethink school improvement? So how can we shift it from being um, a group of five people to everyone being a part of the school improvement process? Um, you don't have a select few that are teacher leaders. Everyone is a teacher leader. So how do we think about our work? And also, really with the architecture piece, it's um, co-creating those systems um, <coughs> and processes, and we talked as we're into some of our schools, we found that every school is in a different place. Some have systems, 
some have processes, some have both, but our job is not to create new, but it's to align. I think Teresa really used, and Jen, really used that align word, which is so important when thinking about architecture. Well, we were a little more wordy, but that's kind of how we rolled. Um, we thought some of the key learnings were that it, whatever we did had to be strength-based. And we, we see that happening when we do our rounds as well, looking at that strength first, but really digging in and talking to people what they see their strengths are. It has to be sustainability. Um, it's evolutionary, and what we mean by that is it's when, when we read the destiny card, it, it seemed about, like, don't do what you've always done. Really think outside the box. Really try and um, talk about what works in your school. And we love the analogy. I'm going to jump to it first because it explains our thinking about um, being a jazz player. So when, when you're in a jazz band, there are some rules, some regulations. They start to play. But what happens is your... Um, mates start to, you know, do a riff off of you, and but it's still within the rules because we set that, and so that that seemed a lot of what the destiny was about is having some place to go, but also having that ability to be flexible and um, have the different groups. So we thought that was just a powerful analogy that we uh, took through the whole thing. Uh, we needed to build an appreciative eye, and again we've seen that in the rounds. Um, we need to co-construct a preferred future, and we love that because that is getting at what we really, really want based on all the evidence that we have, and to do it together as a team. Of course, buy-in is really critical. And we saw four key parts. They were action, innovation, collaboration, and commitment. Always celebrating success. Finding the supportive infrastructure that was there. Fresh and new, you're going to hear that a lot in Destiny. It just It's really something that was evident in the article. Building capacity, and again, and I think um, Maureen said that, that uh, continuous inquiry, that, that self-renewal. So how we thought it connected was um, the celebration that we need to do a lot in the schools, uh, that we would support this work, continuous improvement, ongoing review and analysis, that focus, that data that we talked about. Shared leadership is huge. Um, building capacity for that appreciative eye. Staff don't necessarily always see the good things in their building, right? And you kind of have to train them to say, we want to go to the negative. What do we have to fix? But th that's a skill that I think you have to learn. Um, so everything is data-driven, research-driven, which is best practices. Again, we brought up that self-renewal, and um, we understand that change takes a long time, so this is a three-year commitment. Um, we tossed around, maybe it actually takes five years, but at least we have three years. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that, the fun part was, we like that jazz analogy a lot, flexibility and trust. Thank you. Any questions for this group or things that you would like to add? All right, so I have uh, one task for you before we break for lunch. And this is going to be um, either uh, in groups of twos or threes. So you can decide at your table. You have enough of these big 11 by 17 kind of, what do you call that, goldenrod color? Yeah. Um, so you can be in twos or threes. And what I would like you to do is to reflect on, we heard it a couple times as the groups were reporting out, didn't we, about the connection to school improvement, continuous improvement process. And so what I'd like you to do is think about from what you just found out or dug deeper into for the appreciative inquiry, how are they maybe alike or different? So create yourself a Venn diagram and put the things 
that you believe only belong on the appreciative inquiry side, only belong on the school improvement side, or what, what goes together in the middle. Because this is a system that we are working with, right? And we don't want what we're doing in this grant to sit separately from what the schools are doing with school improvement. So to take about uh, seven minutes with your elbow partner or your trio and, and see what you can fit onto this Venn diagram. <laughs> And I didn't try and do the middle part of the Venn diagram. But that appreciative inquiry, appreciating and valuing the best of what is, envisioning what might be, dialoguing what should be, and the assumption is that an organization is a mystery to be embraced. And then the school improvement, so I made, again, I made the link to the problem solving piece, the felt need identification of the problem, analysis of causes, analysis and possible solutions, then we have action planning or the treatment, right? And the assumption is that an organization is a problem to be solved. Okay, so it might not be exactly that scheme, but I think one of the things, and all of us have been in school improvement for forever, right? And, and so one of the things for me, a key learning for me, was that just by asking a question, you're changing the future. Right? So when you ask the positive questions, you're gearing things in that direction as opposed to when you're always poking at the problem and the cause. Right? And then another analogy um, that kind of made sense to me, and you can see whether maybe there's other analogies that make sense to you, is that we didn't get the light bulb by helping make the candle burn brighter. Right, so sometimes the school improvement process looks like how do we get it a little brighter, and how do we get it brighter yet? How do we, you know, how do we change the wax, and how do we make this, you know? It's more about refining and taking those, it's more like that technical change as opposed to the adaptive change. And so, really, in some of these schools, like, have you been in one that people are not working hard? Because in all the instructional rounds that I've been in, everybody is working so hard. So it's sort of like they're working to make the candles burn brighter. And, and hopefully in this process, with appreciative inquiry, we can move more towards that light bulb moment with them. And they're hungry for it, at least the ones that I've been in. You know, they want it. So I'm going to leave you with that. We are going to have lunch. And here's gonna, what's going to be, what's going to work best, is if we go out the back door, because it's in the hallway, and then you come back this way to get it. 